fight against the Columbus crew of BMO Field, a, uh, shall we say, controversial one-all draw against the uh, much uh, maligned crew team from uh, Central Ohio. I've done a lot of these video blogs now in the last year, uh, and there's three things I really wish I could stop talking about in uh, these blogs that I do. They would be in no particular order, the Columbus crew, and uh, that's all I'm going to mention about the crew today. Uh, they came, they got, a, they got a lucky point in my opinion, and they left town. Uh, their day will come. Hopefully it'll come uh, a little later on this season when TFC has the uh, rematch with them back in uh, Crew Stadium. Uh, the second thing, of course, is uh, the uh, standard of officiating in Major League Soccer, which uh, frankly is uh, uh, becoming more disgraceful uh, and inconsistent by the day. And the third one, which I'll get to uh, a little later on, is uh, the inconsistent uh, and dare I say, uh, uh, disappointing nature of uh, how BMO Field uh, and the Toronto FC front office has been implementing some, uh, some security procedures uh, in light of some uh, uh, fan activity over the past few games. And I'll get to that a little later on as well. First off, the game, and generally what I like to do in these blogs, uh, because I think there's a n more than enough negativity out there, is I really want to try uh, and focus on the positives. And there were a significant number uh, of positive TFC fans to take away from the game yesterday. First off, Tony Tachani, he scored. Uh, he, of course, is the Generation Adidas player that came uh, via the uh, Dwayne Di Rosario trade from the New York Red Bulls. Uh, he'd only scored one goal in his first season in uh, uh, New York last season, and in his uh, third game here in Toronto, he's on the books with a really, really nice goal uh, uh, that was really, really easy on the eyes. Uh, Julian de Guzman, who... Uh, uh, again, uh, uh, stepped up his game, and I think every time, every game that we've seen him since he's been back from injury, uh, I think he's simply improving match by match by match. Uh, he bossed his position, frankly, uh, uh, in the center of midfield yesterday, and uh, he was directly responsible for Tachani's goal. Tachani finished it very well. Uh, I would argue that de Guzman's through ball was absolutely perfect. It couldn't have been placed any better to give um, uh, uh, the other midfield partner he was working with, Tachani, a chance of scoring, which he then, uh, which he then took care of in the 41st minute. Uh, TFC broke Columbus's 400-plus uh, goal streak. Coming into the game yesterday, I think it was 373 minutes or something to that effect, that uh, uh, the crew uh, in a row had kept scoreless. So uh, they've had trouble scoring goals as well, just like Toronto FC, but they've done a much better job collectively uh, at the back than uh, uh, almost any team in Major League Soccer this season. Uh, again, your Hesmers, your uh, uh, Chad Marshalls, people of that ilk, uh, and a former TFC cast off Julius James have been actually doing quite well, uh, keeping the ball off the uh, uh, out of their own net. So I think it's a huge positive for uh, a team like Toronto that, of course, has been struggling offensively, found a way through a very, very solid Columbus defense yesterday. Uh, Alan Gordon and Adrian Can, both uh, with Knox, came back. Uh, uh, and looked their stalwart selves yesterday. G uh, Gordon came off uh, in the half uh, at the half, of course, uh, not according to injury or anything like that, but because TFC had to actually make some changes due to uh, the red card. Uh, and I'll get to that in a brief second. And I really think, from my perspective, in the uh, southwest corner, uh, southeast corner of the stadium, I should say, uh, I think Dan Gargan uh, again. He was subbed uh, early in the second half. Uh, did an excellent job against who I would argue is the the real offensive threat on uh, uh, on Columbus. It's not Renteria and Gavin, the strikers, yesterday. It's Robbie Rogers, the winger. Uh, arguably, in my opinion, one of the best players at his position in the league. Now, I thought Gargan did a great job uh, shutting him down yesterday. He played a nice tight line uh, and uh, did a really good job of, of making sure that he wasn't getting balls into the box. Uh, uh, that uh, the Columbus Strikers had anything to do with. So that was the game, uh, uh, at least up to the point where silly season started, uh, the red card. Uh, the red card obviously was justified. Uh, Tony Tichani scored his goal, jumped over the boards and into the stands. Uh, uh, the letter of the law says that's a, that's a card. He had picked up uh, a uh, dubious at best yellow card earlier for some... Uh, uh, a little bit of pushing and shoving on the sideline, which one could argue he was, wasn't even involved with. He was kind of a Johnny come lately, and he was just, uh, you know, wrong, wrong place at the wrong time. He got penalized for it. So there's two cards. 
But again, it all comes back to consistency, and I've been talking about it week after week after week in these video blogs and on my blog, that the, the consistent nature uh, uh, of how the rules are interpreted in Major League Soccer simply is not there. Uh, looking at the stats today, there were 29 fouls called by that referee yesterday. Uh, 16 by Columbus and 13 by the crew. Seven cards, including the yellow card. Uh, five of those cards were for Columbus. Uh, f four of them, I should say, were Columbus. And then, of course, the two yellows slash red for TFC for a total of seven, technically. But 29 fouls is one every three minutes of the game. Uh, soccer is a contact sport, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's a game that actually sees, uh, you know, a little bit of... Uh, a, a little bit of smashing and a little bit of physicality. Not, uh, it's not ice hockey or, or, or national football league or anything like that, but there is some physicality in the game. 29 fouls, uh, one every three minutes, just sucks the life out of the game. Uh, and uh, getting to the red card itself, uh, I remember uh, Terry Dunfield uh, in the first game, who plays for Vancouver, in the first game where they beat TFC 4-2 and they're... Uh, 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 inaugural game in Major League Soccer, he jumped into the crowd, didn't get a card. So there's there's precedent there for a little bit of leeway when it comes uh, to the official, and obviously this official, I don't even remember his name, I don't even care what his name is, uh, he just simply dropped the plot yesterday completely uh, and sucked the life out of the game. Uh, one final positive about the game as well, I think, was the fact that uh, with some positive substitutions, uh, and with uh, uh, some really strong defensive play, I think TFC uh, did themselves uh, a great service yesterday by uh, playing the game for uh, about 55 minutes down a man uh, uh, against the crew, uh, only gave up one goal and did get a point. Obviously, TFC needs to start converting more points at home, especially if they have any hope of making the playoffs. But uh, all things considered yesterday, based on uh, uh, the poor officiating, uh, a point is not really the worst result in the world, and it gives the team something to build upon going into what is arguably uh, its best chance at silverware this year, which is the uh, Voyagers Cup and uh, hopefully a, another foray uh, into the CONCACAF Champions League. Uh, they play FC Edmonton uh, in Commonwealth Stadium Wednesday evening. I think the game is on uh, basic cable on Rogers Sportsnet, so everybody will be able to watch it. Uh, and uh, hopefully TFC can... Uh, uh, put Edmonton to the sword and uh, really uh, uh, build uh, uh, build it up there so that the game coming back to Toronto uh, in May, I think May 5th is the game, uh, just a few days after the federal election, is going to be a lot easier than the one going away because TFC also has uh, a game uh, uh, this coming Saturday night in Seattle, Washington against the Seattle Sanders. The last thing I very quickly want to talk about today, and again I hope that it's something that I'm able to uh, put away and not have to spend any time talking about ad nauseum going forward, uh, is the issue surrounding security at BMO Field. Uh, as I talked about in my blog earlier this week, uh, a post that a lot of people read uh, uh, based on the feedback that I got, and I thank you for everybody who commented on it, uh, is the fact that there was a, a significantly increased security presence all over BMO Field yesterday. Uh, a significantly larger uh, proportion of uh, uh, paid duty police officers, and they get, I think, something along the lines of 250 to $300 a game uh, every time that they come out. That's a lot of money. Uh, and uh, uh, that beefed up police presence led to a larger number than usual uh, of fans getting uh, booted out of the stadium yesterday and being arrested. Uh, I saw uh, uh, a number of, uh, at least I've heard, uh, I should say, a number of people complaining about tourists being in the supporter sections yesterday, throwing beers uh, and things of that ilk, jumping up on the capital stand, things of that ilk, and being uh, hauled away. Uh, again, those people not affiliated in any way, shape, or form with any of the supporters groups. Listen, I get the fact that uh, there were some flares and pyro going off in the stands uh, I, uh, last week. I get the fact that there was going to be a bit of an amped security presence yesterday, but again, I think there has to be a fine line drawn between uh, uh, you know, responsibly running your business and making sure that all of your patrons have a safe uh, environment to enjoy the games in, with the fact that you uh, have your most ardent fans uh, uh, maybe not pushing the envelope, but sort of pushing the edges of the envelope, so to speak, sometimes when it comes to what is acceptable or not acceptable behavior. I think everybody in the supporter sections yesterday would have been fine with some increased security 
uh, oversight over what's happening based on the fact that there was some stuff that the club doesn't like that happened in the games before. But frisking people and patting people down on the way into the stadiums, having uh, uh, about a dozen paid duty police officers waiting into the sections at given times to haul people away, just seemed like uh, uh, a, an overreaction on my part. Now, over the last few years, there's been uh, issues that have led to these sorts of security clampdowns uh, uh, that have happened almost on an annual basis for whatever reason. I don't really want to get into them, but there's been some incidents that have happened like that, uh, including flares, of course, previously. What happens is there appears to be always this little one or two game or three game or even four game sort of tightening of the rules by the uh, front office, and then that just gradually slips away. And then the fans start pushing the edge of the envelope again until something stupid happens again, and then the clamp excuse me, and then the clampdown comes. With a little more cooperation and uh, a contact with the supporters uh, uh, groups that the club obviously knows who these people are, and with a little more consistency on the part of how they implement their security rules, I think uh, the needs for clampdowns and uh, uh, aggravation of uh, hundreds of patrons yesterday simply wouldn't be necessary and wouldn't need to take place. So that's it. Uh, hopefully I won't have to talk about security again this year. Uh, hopefully I won't have to talk about Columbus very much again this year. And I hope, against hope, even though I don't think it's going to be the case, I really hope I don't have to talk about uh, MLS uh, officiating uh, any further this year as well. Uh, there will be another video vlog up on uh, uh, Thursday after the uh, first game of the Voyagers Cup on Wednesday. Uh, you folks have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.